Today we'll talk about my most ambitious project in Kerbal Space Program, why it failed so far and how I want to salvage it and make it happen before Kerbal Space Program 2 hits early access. Let's do this! Hello everybody and welcome! If you are a long-time viewer, you might remember this. Yeah, I planned a super big mission back in 2017 called Invictus. Building upon my two series Journey to Jewel and Ozyman Diaz, if you don't know them, links are in the description, I wanted to create the ultimate quest, a grand tour of all stock planets and moons plus the outer planets from the Outer Planets mod. Yeah, that was almost six years ago and things didn't go as I had envisioned them. Two big issues. First, I thought in addition to building the ship, flying the mission, editing it and everything, I could also compose music for it and make like an album to go along with it. And let's just say my ambition exceeded my actual skill in that department. The next problem was feature creep. Since I wasn't able to get it done quickly enough, KSP churned out a few updates in the meantime. And some of them included some really good upgrades like robotics and ground science. So I decided to expand the mission parameters and include ground science into it. And I thought I could add surface features to OPM myself by reusing assets from the stock DLC, which would have worked, but was tedious work and I didn't make any real progress. But for the ship itself, Basically, I wanted to have a rover on board that would drive to a surface feature and scan it, which of course increased science payload, which of course increased vehicle complexity. I didn't make life easier for myself. Let me show you what I mean. This is the first one, Invictus 1, which is technically not really the first because I experimented a lot before settling on this first design. Basically, I wanted to continue the style of Ozymandias with a reusable spaceship that could land horizontally, refuel with resource drilling and ISRU refinery and have a separate lander for the smaller planets and moons. I mean, I could have reused the old Aussie for almost every part of the journey, except, and those are big ones, Moho and Lathe. The old lander's aerodynamics wouldn't make it through Lathe's thick atmosphere and Moho's gravity wouldn't have allowed the Aussie to lift off from it. So I slapped some more engines on the lander and put it into the back of the ship so those engines could support Invictus during ascent until it was high enough for a stable orbit. The lander itself was pretty crammed, full of science stuff and resource gathering equipment so you could refuel it on Tylo, because it would not be possible to land and return with a single tank. I still think this ship is one of the most visually beautiful I have ever designed, but there were some issues during flight I won't get into right now. Nothing that would stop the mission, but it made life harder for me. Invictus V2 was the roided up bigger brother. Almost 200 tons heavier and with a lot more nuclear engines to tackle the Moho problem without using the lander engines, because the lander was put inside the other way around. I'm honestly not sure why I did it this way. The lander was supposedly better aerodynamically, but still very heavy because of all the mining equipment it carried with it. Which made it tip over a lot when not landing absolutely perfectly. This entire thing was a mess to be honest, so the less said about it, the better. For Invictus 3, I managed to add a science lab and still lose weight compared to version 2. The lander was again pointing the right way and I tried to increase stability when landing by adding the landing gear to the wingtips. But again, lots of heavy mining equipment that I wouldn't need most of the time. Basically only on Tylo and Slate, another hard to land on and return from moon that's part of the Outer Planets mod. 
I also beefed up the antenna rig to be able to use the scanner for resource scanning planets and moons. You need to establish a link back to Kerbin in order to do that. And I don't think all previous iterations would have managed that with what they had. This variant wasn't bad per se, but I didn't get to play the mission for real with it. Then came Invictus X, named for the even more pronounced landing gear stabilization, or at least attempt to do so, because I believe that this didn't really work as well as I imagined it would. Also, the way I mated the ships together with this weirdly angled docking port didn't make rejoining them any easier. And honestly, I didn't like the look of it much. What was a step in the right direction at least was trying to simplify the lander engine setup. Having the single vector instead of four aerospikes brought some advantages at the same mass. Higher thrust and gimbal ability. So you will see this idea carried over to other versions. For instance, Invictus R. The R stands for Robotics. Yes, this was my first attempt to integrate the newly released robotics from the Breaking Ground expansion into my Invictus program. The rover would unfold from the cargo bay and the Kerbal could get out and drive around exploring the surface. Unfortunately, I wasn't that experienced with robotics and this has caused a lot of headaches. But what I did realize was, hey, I don't need to bring all that mining equipment with me all the time. So I created a sort of jacket that Lander would bring along to Tylo and Slate. I was rather happy with that concept, but things still weren't perfect and the robotics glitched out often. So along came Invictus 2020. Yeah, we're on the sixth version already and I'm not even sure those are all of them. I might have lost some craft files along the way. And this one was completely bonkers, or at least Lander was. In order for this to work, servos had to tilt the engine pylons before landing. And there was a Tylo and Slate attachment, which could be left on the main ship if not needed. Why did I use this weird design? Well, the idea was to deploy the rover more easily and with a less convoluted robotic contraption. Yeah, so... Basically, I did not make a convoluted rover contraption, I made a convoluted lander contraption. Smart. I also put the entire science package into the rover, so driving across a celestial body would now enable me to gather all the science, not just surface features. But I quickly came to my senses with this weird lander design and created a V2 of this, where I went back to the idea of having the rover stowed vertically. But with my plan of having the entire ship land horizontally, which is in itself in a bit of a nightmare, I have to admit, this plan had a fatal flaw. When landing the entire contraption on, let's say, Minmus for refueling, how to gather science? Because, well, the rover could not really be deployed. Yeah, sure, I could detach the lander in orbit and land that separately, but that would be really tedious. So all of that wasn't good, but at least I was moving in the right direction, or at least I thought so, by reducing complexity again uniting the lander and ship mining mechanism. The Tylo jacket would act as the main drill and refinery when attached to the main ship. Enter Invictus 2022, the last of the horizontal landers. Yeah, more on that later. It was very similar to the second 2020 version, but it included a mechanism to make landing the entire stack possible by adding these pistons. These would tilt the ship so the aft section cleared the ground enough for the rover to exit the cargo and perform its duties. But there were still a lot of flaws. The wheels were puny, the lander didn't perform optimally, the tilting mechanism often caused the landing gear in the front of the ship to explode because too much stress was put on it. Also, while impractical, I thought the rover looked like crap. Then, still in 2022, I completely switched style and decided to use a vertical landing platform for my mission. The result? Invictus Trifecta! The inspiration for the name was of course the now three engine nacelles. Why three? So it would be stable when landing. Basically I thought if it's good enough for Starship, it's good enough for me. And we have 
almost reached perfection. What was still too complicated was the rover deployment process. It was also prone to spontaneous Kraken visits, as you may have already seen in the YouTube shorts I posted a while ago. So, of course, there had to be Invictus Trifecta 2. But I'm not going to show you that today just yet. Thanks, by the way, to the probably just three people that are still watching after hearing me ramble about my different spaceship designs. I have to admit, having KSP2's early access release come closer and closer made me realize I really have to finish this one one way or the other. So this is going to be really trimmed down to the bare essentials compared to my initial vision. I originally intended a 20 plus episode series for Invictus. That's out of the window. It's going to be a two-parter, probably inner planets in one and outer planets in the other episode. No theme music for every planet as I intended originally. There is an Invictus theme that I will use and I have finished a track for the Eve Ascent. If I have time I will add some, if not, then not. Getting this mission out the door is now more important than adding new music to it. <laughs> At least KSP2 and my project have something in common. After many years of delay, there will finally be something released to the public. And I hope you will tune in and see what is very likely going to be my swan song for KSP1. Because if the sequel holds up to its promises, I'm going to spend a lot of time with that and won't be able to fly the original that much. Definitely not enough to do a complete grand tour plus Outer Planets mission. On the other hand, if KSP2 sucks, well, back to the roots I guess. But I have high hopes for it after seeing it develop over the past few years. And while I was not able to watch KSP1 grow from its very first version, I do want to be along for the ride this time. Because if I won't be able to fly to space for real, which I still really want to do, then at least I want to hurl some little green creatures through space in wild contraptions. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.